So we've stated the change of variables formula for a general change of uh, variables function. Um, let's now turn our attention to the coordinate systems that we're familiar with. Um, so let's start with polar change of uh, coordinates. So remember that the polar change of coordinates uh, formula uh, replaces x and y's with r's and thetas. So um, the, technically that, that function is t of r theta equals x, which is r times cosine theta, and y, which is r times sine theta. Well, if we want to use the polar change of coordinates to calculate integrals, the missing ingredient is the Jacobian determinant. So let's calculate the Jacobian determinant of the polar change of variables. So here we're trying to calculate the derivatives of x and y with respect to r and theta and take a determinant of the resulting matrix. So um, what are those derivatives? Well, um, x is r times cosine theta, so its derivative with respect to r is cosine theta y is r times sine theta, so its uh, derivative with respect to r is sine theta. For the second column of this two by two matrix, we're taking derivatives of the coordinates with respect to theta now. The derivative of r times cosine theta with respect to theta is negative r times sine theta, and uh, the derivative of r times sine theta with respect to theta should be r times cosine theta. So um, let's take a determinant of this two by two matrix. So here again, we're multiplying the diagonal and then subtracting the product of the other two entries. This gives us cosine theta times r times cosine theta or r times cosine squared theta. And then we're multiplying sine theta by negative r times sine theta and subtracting. The two negatives cancel and we end up adding r times sine squared theta and of course the r factors out here and cosine squared plus sine squared is one which tells us that the jacobian determinant we will be using when we apply change of variables is just equal to r great so let's state this uh the the change of coordinates theorem in polar coordinates as its own result let's say that we are studying a region d in two dimensions and let's say we manage to describe that region in polar coordinates with inequalities. Say that maybe the thetas range from a fixed theta, theta one, to another fixed theta, theta two. And let's say that the radii or r ranges from one function r one of theta to another function r two of theta. If we apply the change of variables idea, what the change of variables says is that, well, any double integral of a function f over the region we're starting with D should be able to be translated using the polar change of coordinates where the R's here range from R1 of theta to R2 of theta. The thetas range from theta one to theta two. And then we use the same density function F, but we replace all of the X's with R times cosine theta. And we replace all of the Y's with R times sine theta. And then in order for this to be an actual equality, we need to account for the Jacobian determinant, which is always equal to R. So this is one of the most commonly uh, uh, made mistakes in multivariable calculus is applying a polar change of coordinates to an integral and forgetting to multiply it by the Jacobian determinant, which is equal to R. So let's go back to one of our motivational examples. And one of the examples we started with, we were trying to integrate the function x squared plus y squared over the circle of radius two. And the calculus that came out of that was kind of nasty because we were using rectangular coordinates. Well, let's now um, use the change of uh, variables formula in polar coordinates. So what is the mass of this region? Well, we want to be integrating our density function, x squared plus y squared. And instead of working with rectangular coordinates, and we can describe this region in polar coordinates. This is a circle of radius two centered at the origin. So the r's range from zero to two, and the thetas range from zero to two pi. So we have our density function, x squared plus y squared. We have our bounds for r and theta, and we have to multiply by r here because that's the J Jacobian determinant. So of course, in polar coordinates, x squared plus y squared is the same thing as r squared. So now we're simply integrating r cubed, where r ranges from zero to two, and theta ranges from zero to two pi. 
The calculus here is much simpler and we can go through it and we get eight pi kilograms. So polar change of variables made the problem much easier and to apply the change of variables, we had to describe this region successfully in polar coordinates. We had to convert all of our x's and y's into r's and thetas. And then we had to not forget to multiply by the Jacobian determinant for the polar change of variables, which is equal to r. Um, here we have a more complicated region. So um, here we're looking at the re part of x minus 1 squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 1. And uh, we want the part of this that's outside of the unit disk. So the equation x minus 1 squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 1 is describing a circle centered at 1, 0 with radius 1. So we want that uh, everything in that circle that is also outside of the unit circle. So um, this is sort of like a, like a moon-shaped region. Um, on the left side of this region, the bound in terms of radii is r equals 1, because this region does not include anything where the radius is less than 1. And uh, the outer part of this moon is described by the equality part of uh, the uh, uh, inequality describing our region, which is um, 1 equals x minus 1 squared plus y squared. And when we write this rectangular coordinates formula out, we get a polar formula, which is r equals 2 times cosine theta. Ignore this text at the bottom here. That's supposed to pop out later. So now we have convenient descriptions uh, in terms of uh, uh, the radii throughout this region. Um, we are, however, missing uh, the thetas in the region. And one thing to note here is that the two circles describing this region meet when r equals 1 meets r equals 2 times cosine theta. So um, where does this occur? Well, this occurs where the cosine of our angle is 1 half. That occurs exactly at one value of theta, which is negative pi over 3, and another value of theta, which is theta equals pi over 3. So now we can get to the, the problem prompt, which is calculating the area of this region. To calculate the area of the region, well, it, what we really need to do is we need to integrate uh, 1 dx dy. But to use uh, polar coordinates here, we need 1 times the Jacobian determinant, which is r, dr d theta. Here, r is ranging from 1, which is this part in green here, to 2 times cosine theta, which is this part in red. And the thetas range from theta 1 equals negative pi over 3 to theta 2 equals pi over 3. So now uh, we have a calculus problem on our hands. Uh, we're, we're integrating r dr d theta with these bounds for r and theta. And uh, when we end up doing the calculus here, we get uh, pi over 3 plus square root of 3 over 2. Um, OK, what about our other named coordinate systems? Well, our other two coordinate systems that we've studied um, are for three-dimensional regions. We have cylindrical coordinates and spherical coordinates. So remember the cylindrical change of variables is really the same thing as polar coordinates where we account for the variable z and there is no new relationship. It's just z equals z. Well, when we go to calculate our Jacobian determinant now, since this change of variables is from R3 to R3, we don't end up with a 2 by 2 determinant. We end up with a 3 by 3 determinant. So what is our Jacobian determinant in this case? Well, what we want to do is we want to calculate the derivatives of x, y, and z with respect to R, theta, and z. So our 3 by 3 determinant looks like this. Um, for our first column here, we're taking derivatives of all of our coordinates with respect to the first variable, which is r. So we should get cosine theta, sine theta, 0 for our first column. Then for the second column here, we're taking derivatives with respect to the variable theta, which end up being negative r sine theta, r times cosine theta, and then 0. And then for our third column, we're taking derivatives of all of our coordinates with respect to the variable z. So we end up with 0, 0, 1. 
This determinant isn't terribly difficult to calculate uh, because uh, we have uh, one row and one column where there's two zeros and a one. So if we choose either one of those rows or uh, columns, uh, we end up simplifying this determinant to a two by two. And that's actually the same determinant we calculate in the polar change of variables. So again, we get R. So whenever we're using change of variables to uh, do a, a, um, a triple integral in cylindrical coordinates, we can't forget to multiply by the factor of R, which represents the stretching that occurs in this uh, change of variables. So let's state this as its own result. If we apply change of variables, uh, the, the change of variables formula to cylindrical coordinates, what we need to do is we need to describe a region maybe called W in the three dimensions um, with inequalities for theta, um, inequalities for R expressed as two functions of theta, and then inequalities of Z expressed as two functions of R and theta. Once we describe our region in cylindrical coordinates, we can take any triple integral over that region of a function f dv and write it as a triple integral in cylindrical coordinates where we're integrating dz, dr, d theta. We need to replace all of the x's in our original function with r times cosine theta. We need to replace all of the y's with r times sine theta. And then z is simply equal to z. And we can't forget to multiply by our Jacobian determinant, which is equal to r. So let's see this in an example. Here we're studying the cone with height capital H and base radius capital R. So in this figure, um, capital H is some fixed constant which represents the height of this cone. And capital R is another fixed constant which represents the base radius of this cone. Um, well, uh, if we wanted to play around with the functions here, um, we could describe this top part of the cone as a function z of our variables here. And uh, the appropriate function would be z equals capital H the height minus h over r times the square root of x squared plus y squared, which is really h minus h over big R times little r. If we, if we use the substitution, x squared plus y squared is r squared. So the idea is that we're orienting this cone in such a way that it's the graph of um, uh, h minus h over r times root x squared plus y squared. And then when z equals zero, what we're doing is we're looking at the circle of radius capital R. So let's say that we wanted to calculate maybe the volume of this cone. Well, to calculate uh, volume, we would, um, if we would need to set up a triple integral, and here, maybe we could switch to cylindrical coordinates. If we switch to cylindrical coordinates, what we're finding is that the volume should be expressed as the triple integral where the density here is one, but we have our Jacobian determinant, which is equal to little r. Now, what are the bounds for z here? Well, z will range from z equals zero, which represents the base of this cone, up to z equals big H minus big H over big R times little r. Then how do the radii change in this region? Well, little r will range from zero out to big R. So the uh, bounds for little r are zero to r. And then the bounds for theta throughout this region are zero to two pi. So when we do the calculus here, um, what do we end up with? Well, we end up with the famous formula for the volume of a, a cone, which is one third pi times big R squared times H. Um, what about a, a different example? So here uh, we have an example where we're defining a region W in three dimensions by inequalities on Z here. So here Z is bounded below by the formula uh, Z equals two plus X squared plus two Y squared. And then Z is bounded above by X squared plus Y squared plus four. Now, if we were to look at any of the equality parts of these inequalities, we would find that um, the lower part is z equals 2 times x squared uh, plus 2 times y squared, which in cylindrical coordinates is really just 2 times r squared. So this represents a paraboloid. And then uh, we have another paraboloid at the other end of the inequalities. z equals x squared plus y squared plus 4 is a paraboloid shifted up to uh, four units along the z-axis. 
And in cylindrical coordinates, our, that paraboloid is z equals r squared plus 4. So um, we can conveniently describe the region between these two paraboloids in cylindrical coordinates. And um, it's uh, here useful to, to recognize where these two paraboloids meet. Well, they both, the two paraboloids meet when z equals r squared plus 4 uh, meets z equals 2 times r squared. And this occurs when r equals 2. Okay, so now um, let's say that we had a density function. Let's say the density function in this uh, scenario was f equals z times root x squared plus y squared. And density here would be measured in kilograms per cubic meter. Well, um, how would the mass be calculated? Well, since this region is conveniently described in cylindrical coordinates, we can do an integral in cylindrical coordinates. So here, we're integrating dz dr d theta. The z's in cylindrical coordinates are varying between 2 times r squared, so that gives our lower bound for our inner integral, up to z equals r squared plus 4, which is the upper bound for our inner integral. How do the radii vary in this problem? Well, uh, r would range from 0 out to the biggest possible radius, which in this case is r equals 2. And the thetas in this region vary from 0 to 2 pi. Now, what are we integrating here? Well, we have our density function, which is written in terms of x's, y's, and z's. And we can't forget to multiply by the Jacobian determinant, which for cylindrical coordinates is equal to little r. Well, um, to do this integral, we need to replace the x's, y's, and z's with z's, r's, and thetas. Well, uh, for this density function, the z is just still equal to z, but now we have square root of x squared plus y squared, which is really the square root of r squared, which is r. So when we simplify the integrand here, the square root of x squared plus y squared gives us another little r. So we're really integrating little r squared times z, dz dr d theta. And when we do the calculus here, we end up with 32 pi as um, our mass. So this region was really two paraboloids stacked on top of each other. Um, those paraboloids are conveniently described in cylindrical coordinates because they both involve factors of x squared plus y squared. In cylindrical coordinates, we can set up our bounds where z is a function of r, and then we have constant bounds for r and theta. And what are we integrating? We're integrating the density function, where the um, x's, y's, and z's are replaced with r's, theta's, and z's. So z remains the same, but the x's and y's change. And then we can't forget to multiply by the Jacobian determinant, which is equal to little r. Okay, so let's talk about our last known uh, 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 coordinate system, which is spherical coordinates. So remember that the spherical change of uh, variables is uh, represented by the function t of rho phi theta, where we replace x with rho times sine phi times cosine theta. We replace y with rho times sine phi times sine theta. And then we replace z with rho times cosine phi. If we're going to use the change of variables idea with spherical coordinates, we need to calculate the Jacobian determinant, which is the determinant of the matrix of partials of all of the x's, y's, and z's with respect to rho, phi, and theta. So in this case, again, we end up with a 3 by 3 determinant. This one requires a little bit more effort. Um, this was actually on a previous homework. But when we go through the determinant here, we end up with the famous rho squared times sine phi. So I encourage you to, if you, if you haven't taken a look at that homework for a while, go back through and try this calculation again. Um, uh, it actually works out pretty nicely with a few trig identities. Um, but the punchline is, in spherical change of variables, the Jacobian determinant is rho squared times sine phi. So we can never forget to multiply by this quantity when we're using spherical coordinates to calculate a triple integral. So um, let's state spherical change of coordinates for integration as a theorem. So let's say we have a, a three-dimensional region W that's described by inequalities for theta ranging from one theta to another, inequalities for phi as a function of theta, 
and then any qualities for rho as a function of both th uh, phi and theta. In this scenario, we can convert any triple integral over the region w into an integral d rho d phi d theta, where the bounds for uh, rho phi and theta are given by these inequalities. And we take our function f, but then we have to multiply it by the Jacobian determinant, which is rho squared times t sine phi. When we do this integral, we have to remember to replace x with rho times sine phi times cosine theta. We have to remember to replace y by rho times sine phi times sine theta. And we have to remember to replace z by rho times cosine phi. So to do a triple integral in spherical coordinates, we need to describe that region in spherical coordinates. And then when we do our integral, we have to replace x, y, and z with the appropriate formulas. And then we can't forget to multiply by the Jacobian determinant, which is rho squared times sine phi. So let's look at an example. So let's say that our region W is defined by the inequality x squared plus y squared plus z squared is less than or equal to a fixed constant capital R squared, but we only want the part of this region where z is not negative. So to visualize this region, well, think about x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals big R squared. That's the sphere of radius capital R centered at the origin. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take everything inside that sphere, but we're only going to look at the part where z is not negative. So this is maybe like called the northern hemisphere of our sphere. Let's say that we did a triple integral of just the function equal to z throughout this region. Well, um, since this region looks in part like a sphere, it would be useful to switch here to spherical coordinates. In spherical coordinates, the rho in this region, so this, this integral should say d rho d phi d theta, I'll fix that as a typo. Um, when we integrate d rho d phi d theta, the rho will vary from zero to r because that's the radii throughout the region. The um, phi ranges from zero, not all the way out to pi, but up to pi over two because we only want the top half of this sphere. And the theta ranges from zero to two pi. Here, we're integrating the function z, which in spherical coordinates is rho times cosine phi. And then we can't forget to multiply by the Jacobian determinant for spherical coordinates, which is rho squared times sine phi. So again, this formula is correct, except instead of just d phi d theta here, there should be a d rho in, in the inside. Um, so again, uh, the uh, rho squared times sine phi is the spherical Jacobian. And this part, rho times cosine phi, is the density function f equals z written in spherical coordinates. So um, when we do, uh, when uh, we, we can simplify this integrand, uh, rho squared multiplies by rho to give rho cubed. And now we have an integral d rho d phi d theta we can do calculus on. Integrating d rho from zero up to capital R simply uh, contributes a constant factor of r to the fourth divided by four, which we can factor out of the double integral or of the triple integral. Um, now we have a double integral d phi d theta, and we're integrating on the inner integral d phi, and the function is sine uh, phi times cosine phi. This inner integral can be done with a u substitution. Uh, it seems like maybe choosing u to equal sine phi here would be convenient because then du is cosine phi d phi. We can also change our bounds by plugging in pi over two into u here and sine of pi over two is one. And then we can plug in uh, phi equals zero and u of sine of zero is equal to zero here. So now when we switch to, uh, to u's here, um, the integral from zero to pi over two of sine of phi times cosine of phi d phi becomes the integral from zero to one of uh, u du. And now we can finish the calculus here. Um, integrating zero to one of u du gives us just a factor of one half we can factor out, which gives us big R to the fourth over eight now. And now we're just left with the integral of from zero to two pi d uh, theta, which ends up multiplying this whole thing by a factor of two pi. So our triple integral, which we're calculating in uh, spherical coordinates, 
ends up being big R to the fourth divided by four multiplied by pi. Now, um, just uh, as a reminder, we could use this uh, calculation to do something useful. If we wanted to uh, calculate the Z coordinate of the centroid of this region, what we would do is we would take this integral, the triple integral throughout the region of Z dV, and then we would divide by the volume of this region, which is really half the volume of the sphere of radius R. And when we take the, uh, that quotient, we end up with Z bar equals three times big R divided by eight. So this is an integral that can accomplish something. So we managed to describe this region, which is a three-dimensional region, in spherical coordinates. And then when we uh, uh, switch to spherical coordinates, we have to replace all of the x's, y's, and z's in the density function with rows, phi's, and thetas appropriately. And we can't forget to scale by the spherical Jacobian, which is rho squared times sine phi.